Hi guys, I'm Allie. Um, Shira, do you want to unmute yourself? Hi, I'm Shira. <laughs> um, and we're obviously your Hillel presidents. Um, we're so excited to welcome you here tonight just to address some questions. Um, we're so excited to go through this town hall despite recent announcements um, from Penn. And we're here really to answer any and all questions you guys have. Um, despite the news, we're looking forward to really the most incredible and amazing semester. Um, and we're here for you and we're just excited to answer all questions you guys may have. I'm seeing all of your faces right now and I'm just so happy and realizing that everybody I miss is on one or potentially three screens and just so thrilled to see everybody. Thanks for being here. It seems like a lot of the answer, a lot of the questions are gonna have more logistical questions than Ali and I can answer. So we are gonna immediately pass the mic to Rabbi Mike to share some more. Hi everybody, it's great to see you. Um, it makes me like really happy and also a little bit sad that we're, we, we're only seeing each other over Zoom and we're not gonna necessarily see each other face to face um, immediately. But I, I wanna share with you, I think a, a little bit of the broad strokes of what we're thinking. And um, as others have said, these are unprecedented times and uh, things are gonna keep changing. But the overall thing that we're 100% committed to is being there for each and every student that we can possibly be there for. And that's both like a staff thing and a student leadership thing and everything in between. And I think while the university seems to have um, been mostly focused on the kind of public health aspect of this and whether or not students can live in the dorms and is there enough testing, we've spent the whole summer, we have the luxury of spending the whole summer thinking about how can we connect with you? How can we connect students with each other? How can we create virtual gatherings? And how can we do some in-person stuff also? So I wanna give just a broad overview of what we're thinking, um, and then we'll open it up to any kind of questions you have. So the, the general idea is there's been a slight shift, obviously, since Penn closed things down. Um, and the major change for us is that um, the building is not gonna be open for random stuff. We were trying really hard to have the Hillel building just open if you wanted to study there or have a group meeting. Um, we can't do that and be in compliance with the university rules. So the building will essentially be um, closed if you need a book from the Beit Midrash or the library, if there's some major um, social justice initiative going on and, and there needs to be a printing job done or something like that you'll be able to arrange to go into the building to use the copy machine or to get a book or something like that with Joan um, or other folks at different times. But, but by and large, unless it's like a real emergency, the building's gonna be closed. Um, there is gonna be a ton of amazing virtual online Zoom programming, leadership, fellowship, Torah study, Israel engagement, community service organizing, like everything that Hillel does, right? Um, from prayer to comedy, um, a lot of it will be done on Zoom. And um, you know, the, all of the Hillel groups and Hillel funding is still in place and there will be more creative ideas than anybody on this call can come up with at this moment to figure out how to do that stuff. It's just gonna be a lot of it's gonna be on Zoom. Um, the other thing is we know that student, a lot of students are coming back to campus. Um, there are people who have off-campus apartments who are planning to come back. There are people who don't have off-campus apartments who are going to try to come back anyway. Um, and our theory is that if we can't have you come to Jewish life, we'll have Jewish life come to you. And um, instead of gathering in large groups in the building, we're going to deconstruct Hillel and deconstruct Jewish life and do it in small little pods. So if you're already living with a bunch of other friends and you wanna have Shabbat dinner together, we'll give you funding, we'll give you food, we'll give you educational resources, we'll um, try to get tons and tons of student hosts in their apartments, in their dorms, not dorms, sorry, in their apartments and in, in fraternity houses or whatever official or unofficial places where students are living and hanging out. Um, or if you feel safe potting and showing up with a group of students, we'll be there to help uh, bring the Jewish content and the food. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there's gonna be a lot of that. So for the holidays, we imagine there being Rosh Hashanah dinners and Yom Kippur breakfasts. And essentially we're gonna rely on how students are organizing organically. And then we'll help connect students who may not have a, a social network 
perfectly plugged in or don't have an invite yet. And we're going to work with lots and lots of student leaders to make sure that there's ways to start to weave freshmen into this, that freshmen are going to get to know each other online on different Zoom things. But also, if people feel safe, like, again, we're going to leave it to you guys. But if, um, if you want to invite a freshman over for an outdoor Shabbat dinner where everyone's, you know, socially distant and safe, Hillel will be there to provide the food and, the, and whatever else we can do to help, chairs and lanterns and umbrellas if it's too hot and umbrellas if it's too rainy. Um, we're thinking a lot about Hillel umbrellas this year uh, for those purposes. Um, and basically, we're just going to do anything we can possibly do to create and hold together community and Jewish life in safe ways. So it's, it's, I think this is funny, but we had a board meeting last night. There's a guy who's 82 uh, on the board call, and he's like, you should have a flash mob in front of Hillel on Rosh Hashanah where they blow shofar. And it's true, we can't organize something where hundreds of Jews are standing six feet apart in front of Hillel on Rosh Hashanah. But if they happen to be there, we, you know, people could stand on the, on the porch and blow shofar. So like from the sublime to the ridiculous, we, we wanna make sure you're safe. We, we're not gonna encourage any dangerous behavior, but within the confines of how people are organizing safely anyway, we're gonna push Jewish content and materials and support and everything else out to you where you are. Um, so that, those are the two things, right? The two things are kind of like, that's virtual. And then, uh, you know, the virtual stuff is all of the Zoom stuff and the in-person stuff is these small pod gatherings. And it could also be for Torah study. It could also be for prayer. It could also be for pastoral care. The third thing that we're going to do is be pushing a lot of care out into the world. So if um, you are a freshman or a sophomore and you're stuck at home with your parents, we're going to try to make sure that Hillel is there for you, um, both at like one-to-one -one kind of there for you, there for pastoral and emotional support. If you're, if you are, you know, figuratively going nuts in your parents' home, or if you're actually like having a mental health emergency in your parents' home, we're going to try to be there for you and to support you and make you feel loved and make sure that you're not missing your sophomore year, or your freshman year. So you feel connected to other folks and that you feel like when you do get to land on campus in real life, that you'll know people and be able to land easily. Um, and we may be sending Jewish life out to people living in areas like so freshmen may get care packages at their parents houses. There may be safe informal outdoor gatherings if there are large concentrations of Jews in certain cities that are all pen people. Um, we're going to try to do all that stuff. Um, and the two last things that I want to say are um, there will be some, there will be kosher food um, in one of two ways. The university is going to provide kosher food uh, in some way yet to be determined. So it may be served, you know, out of the front of Hillel, or it may be served at other uh, dining locations around campus. It's going to be all grab and go for sure. There won't be any kind of indoor eating spaces. Um, and in addition to that, Hillel is going to be working with student leaders and just Jews to create lots and lots and lots of other food options. So there will be, there may, if it's safe, you know, we may be able to pull off like barbecues um, outside where people can spread out and, and get food and be safe. There, um, you know, it, it, in earlier years, students created like little business, like kosher food businesses. So like on Saturday night, the Orthodox community used to have like a panini restaurant in, in Rodin. So like there, we may be helping students create, again, like ways of delivering kosher food and community that are safe and um, are kind of working on the pre-existing pods that already exist. Um, and Hillel is planning to spend a huge amount of money on free food. So um, it will be there for you to pick up. It will be delivered to you. It will be there at your friend's house. Um, we may throw it at you while you walk to class. Uh, well, you, I don't know, while you go for a walk between classes down Locust Walk. We will, we're going to figure it out. But uh, if we all lose our minds, it, it is possible we may be throwing a challah at you on Friday afternoon um, as you walk by. Uh, the final thing that I wanted to say is, basically, generally speaking, the default for the reform, conservative, and other alternative prayer services is going to be Zoom and online. If groups want to informally get together and have like an informal CJC Havdala or an in informal outdoor something at the Biopond, it's going to happen and we're happy to have that happen.
but we're, there are going to be freshmen and sophomore and people who had on campus housing who don't return to campus. And we don't want everything to be in person in that way, because then there's no way to kind of recruit the next generation of CJC and RJC and NARIA people if you're, if you're just doing it all outside. Um, and for the Orthodox community, we obviously recognize that like tuning into Zoom is, is, is not going to be a possibility. So we are working creatively with OCP co-chairs and Gabayim and um, Rabbi Joshua Klein and Sarah Klein, who are the new GLIC couple on this call. They're amazing. We're all working collaboratively to figure out what this is going to look like. But the short version of what it's probably going to look like is that the weekday minion for OCP will be outside um, in a covered area in front of Hillel that has like lots of air and lots of room for people to be socially distant and still have a minion. Security will be there. It's gonna be the normal allied Barton security, not police security, but um, just the kind of normal security guards. And for Shabbat, it, um, it depends on how many students are on campus, but we will essentially, if it's too many people to all be in one place and hear each other, that there'll be ways to kind of deconstruct OCP where it'll happen in a few different places outside. The university will not let us like take over the lawn in front of Hillel and have 150 OCPers um, davening chakras out there, praying the, the morning service out there. So um, it may have to be deconstructed into smaller groups. Kilo will provide security, chairs, uh, set up if you need it. Like again, we have a maintenance staff and a building staff. So if you need chairs delivered, if you need uh, a tent set up, if you need uh, a Torah delivered Friday afternoon so that you can have a minion in your backyard on Saturday morning, that's kind of how it will happen for bigger gatherings like Shabbat morning and for the high holidays. Um, and for weekday minion, it'll, it's a little bit of an easier thing because it's not as large of a group of people. So that's, I think, the, the headlines. Um, if I am missing anything, I'm sure we'll get to it in the Q&A, but that's what we're thinking about. And we are, um, we're gonna be there. Um, in a very serious way for everybody to make this super weird upside down and backwards uh, semester or maybe a year um, better than it would be with, without having someone there for you. And also in some weird way, we think that there's gonna be a tremendous opportunity here. And for all of the student leaders that are on the call, if you represent a group that you care about, um, there's gonna be an incredible opportunity here because people are gonna be dying for connection, for community. And um, we're gonna be way ahead of the game in supporting you to do it and to do it for yourselves. So um, I think there's some silver lining in all of it and um, it's gonna keep changing and we'll get through it together kind of one step at a time. And as long as we're safe and healthy and responsible and not um, doing things that are gonna make other people sick or you know, potentially put other people's lives at risk. Um, we're just going to keep innovating and creating to make it the best possible year we can for everybody. Thanks, Rabbi Mike, um, for all that uh, really helpful information. Um, I'm just going to be the the Q and A uh, facilitator here, so people can feel free to either put questions in the chat, um, either to everyone, or if you'd rather. It'd be private, you can send to me. Um, you can also, if you click on participants at the bottom, you can raise your hand um, and, and I will happily unmute people if they would like to ask a question over, over the screen. And I would just say like dive in folks, like if you're worried that the question is like just about what you're interested in, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be useful for other people. So ask, ask away. Okay, so the first question, Ira, is it okay if I just read them as they come in? Yep, go for it. So the first question is, where are these pods coming from? Is there gonna be a survey of where people end up to help them for the pods? Yes, yes and yes. So what we're gonna to try to do is, we know that they're, I mean, I don't know. What, what I hear about young people today is that you're all gonna hang out anyway and that there'll be different versions of that, right? There'll be people who are more cautious and people who are less cautious. So again, the pod could be you decide, you know, you're living with 12 other people in an apartment off campus 
and you decide that the 12 of you agree upon a certain set of rules and then the 12 of you in your apartment don't need masks on and can eat together. So like that's the kind of place where we could send Shabbat dinner, right? Um, some people are going to be more fluid about it where it's going to be, we're, we're happy to gather in small groups or we're happy to gather in small groups outside, even if we're not all potted up. So for those kind of situations, we're going to try to make sure that you're also extending invitations to people who are not the obvious people, making sure that if there's new freshmen on campus or someone who might be alone or having a hard time gets an invite. Um, and, uh, especially if it's outside and socially distant where it's really safe, um, we would try to like intentionally create, like, I don't know if people were part of Israel across Penn last year, but like intentionally try to create moments where there are, you know, volunteer hosts, like almost like mix them up meals where if, again, if it's outside and safe, like where you would actually consciously try to reach out to people that you didn't normally have Shabbat dinner with to make sure that people feel that sense of community. And we're gonna do as much as we can to find out who's back on campus, who stayed home, who's living together to try to map out like what those pods look like so that we can um, try to reach out to those folks in a smart way. And the other thing we're gonna need your help with is to understand who's sick. If there are students getting sick and if the university is putting them in quarantine, I don't know if that's still the plan. I, I don't know if like now that you're living off campus, it's like Penn doesn't know you, you know? It's like this awkward, like we all pretend like we don't know each other. Or if you're living in 234 and you have COVID-19, you're gonna get whisked away to the freshman quad to a special quarantine room. But like, we wanna make sure that if you are quarantined, that like we can help deliver food and love and care. And like, we're not gonna visit with you face to face, but we're gonna make sure that you, you don't feel like you're trapped in a room alone and that no one checks in on you. So um, without being creepy, we're gonna ask for people to share a ton of information and for student leaders to collect a ton of information and to post these surveys so that we have good info and that we're not trying to like uh, reach students that, that are actually living in you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma because um, we think they're in the, you know, living somewhere in West Philly. Okay, great. So um, next question that came in was, um, are we talking about tents on the Hill porch? How will they be available to be used by students? So thank you. The, so that I don't know if they're going to be tents or if they're going to be like the sukkahs minus the walls and with waterproof rain coverings, but there'll be some kind of shelter. Um, they're not really going to be open for like, club meetings and things like that, because it just, it violates the university policy too much. They'll be there for Minion, and we're hoping to have things that like let people sit together and have picnics if they're already hanging out with each other. Like if there is, it's gonna depend on what happens with kosher food, but if there's kosher food pickup at 1920 Commons or at Hillel, we're, we're looking for ways that you might be able to sit on the lawn as opposed to just go back to your dorm, your dorm, <laughs> to go back to your living place off campus unofficially and eat by yourself. You might be able to sit with friends and eat together outside. Um, and if it was raining, we could imagine that people might be sitting in those coverings in front of Hillel, but you're not gonna be able to sign up for it to have like a PIPAC meeting there. Um, Rachel asked, well, Rachel said she's so excited about Sukkot. Is Hill plan on having Sukkot in some creative way? And the answer is yes, totally. Um, we'll figure out more of the details. I'm making bad rabbi jokes about this for days now. No one has laughed, but I'm gonna make the joke again, which is the minimum requirements for a halakhically permissible wall on a sukkah is actually like, it can be three strings separated by a certain distance. That's basically like an open air dwelling at that point. So I can imagine all sorts of ways that we can do Sukkot that are basically like being outside and still fulfill the requirements of Sukkot. Um, and yeah, um, so I think we're, we'll, there'll be lots of great opportunities for things like that. Um, if I have things that belong to Hillel that I wasn't able to return, um, is there an opportunity to return them? Dina, we've been after you all summer. No, I don't know. Um, yes, that's the kind of thing where like, if, or if you had Amazon packages delivered, you know, like students do sometimes, um, we will, like, we can arrange, you, you'll talk to Joan and you'll find a way to come in with a mask and follow all the protocols and get your stuff. We just, it can't be kind of open to people randomly. So yes, yeah, you'll be able to get your stuff. Um, Sarah is saying, I'm living at home now. Could I potentially organize a socially distant picnic? Yes. 
So that's the other thing we're going to be looking for is that if you are, if you are living in a, not in West Philly, but somewhere else in the world with Penn students around you, right? Whether that's you all decide to, to rent a house in the Berkshires for the semester, or you live in Westchester or in like one of the Jewish neighborhoods outside of Cleveland or, or Chicago or Miami, and you want to host a Penn Shabbat dinner or a Penn breakfast or Penn whatever, um, yes, we will help fund it and coordinate it. And we're, we're totally into that kind of stuff. Sarah, thank you for asking that question. It's really important. Naomi saying, these ideas sound great. You'd love to get involved. Um, that's, oh, that was private, sorry. Naomi, that's just awesome. Ali Shapiro also is messaging me privately here. Um, there will probably be more than one sukkah. So that's good news as well. Um, should I make bad jokes about the private messages I'm getting? Someone's asking about, no, okay. Um, public questions are, um, as a student, Yarden asked, as student leaders, how will we be able to connect with freshmen and recruit them for groups when we don't know who they are? Um, that is a great thing. Uh, it's a great question. So what we, we can't do is give you like a list of every freshman and then have everyone fighting over them. It just would be super uncomfortable. But what you'll do is you're, you're gonna do the same things that you would do in real life. Freshmen on, who are living in West Philly and freshmen who are living at home are going to be desperate to figure out what the hell college is like and to connect to Penn. So whatever group you have, you're going to have like a Zoom general body meeting. You're, we're going to, you're going to, you know, the five, you're going to make a, ma a map of everyone you know already because of friends and friends of friends. And then you're going to have one-on-one -on -one coffee, coffee chats um, with freshmen and say, hey, do you know other freshmen that we should meet who might be interested in X club? And you'll figure it out. And it's, it is going to be weird, but people are going to want to do it because they're not going to want to be left out. And it's, it's the only option. So I think that's how it's going to go. Um, so, um, okay. Ira said to everyone, do I need to read these? That's just a post from Ira. He put a little link up there. There's a survey. Josh Schnitzer is asking, is there a chance to do some kind of hybrid learning opportunity with pods? Yes. So, there, if, for example, if there are student clubs and you guys want to meet outside together face to face, like we're not saying like the CJC board can only meet on Zoom. Like the sun, we're not in control of it, right? Do what you want. Be safe, right? We're not trying to hurt anyone. And, and I do think that there is a real issue around, this is my one moralistic thing I'm going to say to you, is if there are 4,000 or 5,000 undergrads living in West Philadelphia and you're not worried about getting sick, and people are hooking up and, and partying, hanging out in large groups inside, coughing on each other, and all the things college students like to do. Um, that, that there is like a real risk that like the number of people who live in West Philly, like for real, are going to die because it, it's going to become a hot spot. And you're going to walk by someone and sneeze on them, or you're going to go into CVS and pick up your prescription. And while you have the sniffles, a diabetic store clerk is going to die. Like it, it's something that we have to think about. And I don't hear Penn talking about that publicly, but I think that like we all have a social responsibility if there's gonna be an invasion of Penn students, of more Penn students living in West Philly than normal to kind of respect the kind of local community there. And again, I'm not trying to be a bummer or morally chastise anyone, but I think it's something that has to be considered. But yes, if you wanna get together and do things in small pods, whether it's learning or leadership meetings, yes. If you have a pod that wants to do learning with, I don't know, with, with Rabbi Klein, um, you know, Rab the new Rabbi Joshua Klein, um, even if, if Rabbi Joshua doesn't feel like he can show up in your apartment with the 13 of you to do some study, he, you could Zoom him in, we'll send you dinner, and you can all have dinner together and do some studying. So every creative thing that is safe, we're going to say yes to, is the answer. Um, Stephen asked... Uh, I'm a graduate student, which means in particular, whoops, um, I should be able to be on campus. How can I make sure that um, I'm still going to be getting all those communications and updates about food and events and stuff? Stephen, it's a really good question. So, and, and I'm not gonna have a great answer. One answer is gonna be that like everything, one of the great failures of Hillel and Penn we reflect the culture of the university is like 
Penn is this place where like to have a community, you have to find a community, right? So it's like, that's why extra, I think why extracurriculars are so important at Penn. It's like, that's how you plug in. It's, it, it's not the kind of place where you can just be a, a human in the entire campus uh, pond. It's just, it's too big and too complicated. So I think Hillel is the same way. So the first thing would be is like the things that you might be interested in or the people that you already know is make sure you're on their lists and fill out their surveys. And again, whether it's like Israel stuff or prayer stuff or Jewish learning stuff, make sure that you're connected in that way. And there also is the grad network, which is gonna have its own version of Hillel engagement in a COVID-19 world. And so that's another way to hook in. But like, for example, Stephen, I don't know a ton about your background, but if you're a grad student who is like part of the OCP, for example, um, you'll get hooked into all the stuff because the OCP is going to know who you are and is going to be doing like, Hilla will do this kind of mass outreach and every club will also be replicating this kind of massive outreach. So we're going to try to get as many people as possible. I also just want to quickly add that at the end of this, Shira and I will put our numbers, our emails um, in the chat. We are, and I speak for all the staff when I say we are accessible whenever. If you are alone in your dorm one night and you do not have a dinner plan and you're looking for a pod to hang out with, you can text us. If you have any questions about an event going on in Shabbat, you can reach out to us. I know I speak for us and the entire staff when I say we're accessible to help you connect with other students and everything will be posted on social media, um, on the listserv, on the uh, weekly calendar updates. So feel free to reach out about that. Yep. And if you want to create something new, um, we're there for you on that. And um, I also just want to say, like, just to ask you to respect staff and student leaders and their boundaries around stuff. So, like, there may be staff and student leaders who are happy to meet you for coffee or take a walk with you or sit socially distant and, and eat pie or whatever it is that you like to do. Um, and there may be folks who don't feel as comfortable doing that. And I would just ask to try to be like thoughtful and sensitive about that and um, to not miss, maybe not assume. Um, and, and, and then you'll figure out those boundaries. But, and I, my guess is it will also change. Meaning if, if the infection levels stay low and there are thousands of students near campus, um, things will get looser as the year goes on. If there's a vaccine that's starting to circulate, things will get looser, right? And if, if there's a spike of infections among Penn students living in West Philly, um, people might clam up a little bit, but we're just gonna keep pivoting and figuring out ways to be there um, in every way we can. Um, so there's also a question here, is a student, are student leaders reaching out to new freshmen? The Hill and Marketing Committee is working diligently to spread the word on how to get more involved and become part of our community's freshmen, given the current circumstances. That's amazing, right? And so I think, Again, you know, we, the staff, sometimes we call Hill a sacred chaos. Um, and what that means is that like, we're, it's okay to have redundancy and we want the most number of people to own Hillel possible, the most number of student groups, the most number of student leaders, the most number of everyone. And so it, the sacred chaos will be beautiful um, if everyone is just working as hard as they can to reach out. And so again, it's like the work of the Hill Marketing Committee is gonna piggyback on the work that individual student groups are doing and then the work that staff are doing. And it's, and I've actually seen, again, um, I've been here for, this is my 16th year at Penn. Um, in the last five or six years, when we've gotten better at this, I have seen a dramatic change in like the default feeling people have about Hillel. We're like in 2010 or 20, whatever, like 12, the default feeling was that Hillel is intense and intimidating. And I, what I hear more often now from folks, even if they don't like Hillel or don't come a lot, is they say, wow, Hillel is really welcoming. And that's because of how all of you think and how, how all of you act. And, and literally like, the, um, I, not me, I'm sorry if it's me or my, I'm not totally sure how it's pronounced, but um, it's like, that's like exactly what makes Hillel amazing, what you just expressed in your comment. Okay. Becky um, is asking a question about catering food for events um, and what's going to happen with the dining hall staff. The, thank, I, don't, I, I know you messaged me privately about that. I hope it's okay that I said it in your name. Um, there, we don't know exactly what's going to happen if, if the meals that we're sending out into the world are going to be from 
Hilal kosher dining or if it's going to be from other catering places or a mix. Um, but if let's say there is a circumstance where um, the dining hall is closed and the kitchen is closed and, and even the stuff that the university is providing is like, you know, they're ordering from some caterer in New Jersey or something. Um, so, you know, the dining staff don't work for Penn Hillel. They work for Bon Appetit that works for Penn. And yet we love them and we know them and they know all of you and they take amazing care of us. And um, a lot of those folks have worked in kosher dining longer than any of us have been here. Like they, like Marty and Troy and stuff like they predate Joan even, um, who's the longest standing person uh, on the call tonight. N no, they don't. Joan's, Joan's been here longer. Okay, sorry. There's real competition here. I didn't know I was like poking the bear here. Um, but we, we love those folks and we are gonna find ways to be there for them. So um, look, there are gonna be probably fewer direct service opportunities this year. Like, I don't know if Big Brothers, Big Sisters can happen. I don't know if West Philly Tutoring Project can happen. I don't like soup kitchen, things like that. But raising money and doing things to the dining workers is something we can do on Zoom to take care of people that we love. And we brainstormed ideas like maybe we should throw them a barbecue in Clark Park that's so safe and socially distant where students cook for them and, and say hi and say we love you and everyone wears masks and are safe and careful. Um, again, like that would really have to be like a student led initiative and we would help pay for the food and stuff like that. Um, freshmen, uh, I'm gonna go back to questions that are popping up. Um, in regards to freshmen, the NSO committee is working on making a video montage as well as a club list. Amazing, Ben, thank you for sharing that. Um, El Yakim is asking about, can we talk more about initiatives aimed towards people who don't live on campus? So there are just going to be tons and tons and tons of online Zoom things. So for example, you know, if Alif Bet, which is Jews and Muslims learning Hebrew and Arabic together, that can happen on Zoom. Um, you know, last year, I don't know if it, if it was, if there were plans to continue, but there was what's at stake in America in, in 2020. Um, these discussion groups, there's Israel Learning Lab and JPEN and, um, you know, like the online learning that we did this summer and the work that Rabbi Gabe was doing with the pen conversations. Um, like all of that is gonna be happening over and over again. And, and so that's gonna be what's available to folks for people who are not on near campus and trying to push love to them that might be deliveries to their house. And if there are clusters of pen people who wanna gather in someone's backyard, again, I don't mean to be stereotypical, but in Westchester, in parts of Long Island, in North Shore of Chicago, where lots of Jews are, um, or you know, in parts of LA, right? Like those major centers um, will help coordinate and fund that stuff even at a great distance. And, um, and I think that there's gonna be like, part of, of the work of staff and every single student group and every Hillel, right? Like the same way all the, all these committees build on each other. We have to think about like, if we can't introduce five freshmen to each other at a Shabbat dinner in the Hillel dining hall, what's a non weird way of introducing five freshmen to each other on zoom. So maybe they meet up in Westchester. If they're all in Westchester, maybe they meet up and go for a socially distant walk together one afternoon and meet each other in real life. Like Hillel can be like the term is called network weavers. We can be network weavers in ways that will literally save people's freshman sophomore years. And every little group in Hillel and the umbrella groups kind of have to really think about how we do that um, in, in the smartest and most non-creepy way, right? Um, we don't want to force people into awkward Zoom calls, but there's got to be some way to do this, right? It can't, we can't be the first people to have to figure this out. Um, Naomi asked, can we hire Kareem and Troy, their food truck? Love that idea. So yes. I, I think that um, if it, look, if the, if our, the people that we love who do kosher dining are working in Falk dining, you know, in the, in the basement to, to cook the kosher food that's going to be served in other places. So we're going to try to give them as much business as we can to keep them employed through Bon Appetit. If Penn decides or Bon Appetit decides to outsource all of that and not hire any of those dining workers back. Yes we could hire them and their food truck. Yes, we could also hire them in all sorts of different ways. Um, if we need additional people to like deliver food or 
to you know whatever it is like part of the work we can do is to try to figure out how to how to keep those guys uh, i don't mean guys in a gendered way i mean those human beings um like connected and moving and earning um whatever income they can and we're always in touch with them so like we've been helping uh, board members adult board members have been helping to try to get them if they were having problems with unemployment benefits and things like that um and I think you all have a powerful role to play with advocacy at the university. I will say to you, I'm very proud of this, that you know, Penn Hillel continued to pay 100% of the salary of everybody who worked for Penn Hillel. Um, that means that there were janitors and maintenance folks who didn't have a huge amount of work to do that continued to get full salary. Even the hourly people, you know, I don't know if folks know Troy, um, there's another Troy who works at Hillel who's been around for you know 15 years and and knows my kids and like we love him and he he does hourly stuff on the weekends and is he's there like resetting the 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 rooms on Saturday afternoon and emptying the garbage and stuff like that so we've been paying Troy his hours even though even when we haven't needed him and so I think that there's room for you all to advocate also on behalf of dining workers where this is a once in a hundred year kind of crisis this is not about a precedent or long-term corporate strategy. This is like, we are all in this together to get through the, the 18 months or whatever it is that this is gonna be. And most of these um, salaries are rounding errors for huge corporations, right? Um, and, and for us, like we are, thank God, in a place where we can continue to provide robust programmatic support and take care of the people kind of who are behind the scenes making a lot of this magic happen. Um, Jonah is asking, will the answers to these questions be written up somewhere? What a perfect question. It's almost like we planted you there, Jonah. Um, there is an updated, I don't know if folks saw the announcement that we put out a few weeks ago. Um, there's an updated announcement going out sometime tonight or tomorrow. The website will be updated. It's, it's that same frequently asked questions thing, but with like the, the new answers and um, with a different message. Obviously, it's not saying we're so excited to welcome you all back to campus. Um, so it, we just updated that and it'll all go out on social media, on the website, and there'll be a mass email going out as well to, to all of your parents too. So your parents can um, maybe, it'll answer their questions so they won't be saying, you know, Ali Akeem, did you figure out what's happening with shofar blowing and Hillel this, this semester? So um, hopefully it'll get you them off your backs as well. And to all the parents who might look at this when this is posted online, I'm, I'm really not, no parent sounds like that. I'm sure you're all being lovely and supportive to your students. Any other questions? I think one of the other things that maybe I'll provoke is um, obviously there's been like a, a sea change and a watershed moment in terms of race in America while we've been apart from each other. And I, you know, we're talking about, we're, Hillel's here for each and every Jewish student. We're here for you and we're gonna find you where you are. The, the other resources on campus that support other ethnic groups, other identity groups, other minority groups, may not have an organization behind them that can do the work that Hillel is going to do. And so I think that part of the work we're, we also should be asking in each of our little bubbles and as a collective is how do we also not just hide in our Jewish silos? Like, again, we keep talking about our pods and we're making this assumption that it's only Jewish pods. And it's true. I, I don't think Hillel wants to deliver Shabbat dinner to thousands of pods for people who don't celebrate Shabbat. But there, there are opportunities to also gather in pods to do interfaith dialogue and inter-ethnic dialogue and interracial dialogue and to talk about the election and to share both like our Jewishness with others and to learn about other people in really deep um, and collaborative ways. And that's also part of Hillel's mission. Um, so, you know, everything that we've dealt with are kind of maybe like the frontline concerns about is there kosher food, is there Shabbat dinner, is there Rosh Hashanah? But there is this whole other element of work that's going to be, my, my guess is super relevant this year and may get hotter and more painful for everyone in, in America as the election heats up, 
and if there is complexity around the election, what happens after the election. And I think that there, look, this is an opportunity where obviously we have to, you have to take care of yourself and stay safe mentally and physically. And we want to keep Judaism alive and we don't want to miss a whole generation of amazing Penn students, you know, in Jewish life. And we actually still have the power to like walk and chew gum at the same time. And so we can both take care of Jewish life and Jewish students and be involved in these bigger universal questions that are at play right now. Hill has like a nice tagline. Hill International had this and we borrowed it, which is like part of Hill's mission is to be distinctively Jewish and universally human and to live in that tension. Not that, right, and Hill the Elder said that, right? I mean, that's like his whole idea is living in the tension of standing both for yourself and also not only standing for yourself. Um, and so there's a huge amount of opportunity, support, uh, and good work to be done in that area as well. <clears throat> Someone asked, uh, where is the recording gonna be posted? Um, Ira, do you wanna respond to that? Uh, it will be on Facebook and probably YouTube as well. Great. If people had cool ideas that were popping up in their minds, like, you know, the 82 year old who suggested the flash mob and the shofar blowing, um, you know, someone suggested like, could you do yoga outside and like have, you know, people can't go to the gym or they don't feel safe going to the gym. Could Hill be hosting yoga outside socially distant? Like send us the ideas. Um, we might say, do great. Will you help us do it? But like, you can say no, but like we, the more creative ideas we get, you are ultimately, the students are the ultimate experts on how this is all going to look and work. So keep pushing, send them to Sheer and Ali, um, send them to all the staff, post them online. Like we, let's get excitement about the things we can do. Other questions or comments people want to ask? Can we get a public encouragement for mask wearing? Yes. Um, I will say it like the, again, I'm, I'm not an epidemiologist, but I play one now in my professional life. <laughs> um, it, it really seems to work. They're starting to do, um, there was like a first study that came out where they looked at very similar communities where there was a high degree of mask wearing and a low degree of mask wearing. And it, it, it really works. It really does seem to be um, speaking, spitting, sneezing. Like I heard somebody on national public radio say like, <laughs> I, I can't even repeat it. It was so off color. But um, I, I, anyway, they were, they were like, the, the rule of, okay, I'll tell you, now that I said that, I have to say it. But this is, this is like a doctor on National Public Radio said, like, the rule of thumb is like, think about if you're standing next to someone and they farted. That, that essentially, like, if you're close enough for it to be really smelly, that's the risk circle around you when you're outside with someone. And that it's the same kind of thing. It's like when things are coming out of your nose and mouth that, um, that other people walk through or breathe in. Um, and again, when you're outside, it gets dissipated really quickly, but when you're inside, it really doesn't. But please, 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 like be, if Penn students are the future leaders and thought leaders and business leaders and academic leaders and change leaders and innovation leaders for the world, like show the world how we can do this and be safe and be the you know top school in the country for being smart and safe and healthy and not the disaster story of when the governor of the state of Pennsylvania had to come in and like move students out of West Philadelphia with like National Guard troops, God forbid, right? But um, it's like, this could be an opportunity to kind of like sanctify the name of the Jews and the, 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 the University of Pennsylvania, or to kind of like make us all look really, really bad to the world. Do you remember what, there was a New York Times art, was it New York Times? There was some article where they talked about hotspots and it was like Penn was like one of six things on the map of the United States. Like, let's not have that be the case. Kill all masks, love it. New different themes for different holidays. Lots of masks for Passover. Okay. 
Listen, it's great to see everybody. Um, we will hang out for a few more minutes. And if there's any other questions that people are slow in posting, we can hang out and ask them. But if folks want to hop off, I just want to say, um, it's so glad. I'm so glad to see all of you. I'm so glad that you're healthy. I hope your family and friends are healthy. And um, we're going to get through this. I promise, like one step at a time. And um, you will have a, I, I really do think you will have a return to a normal pen life. Um, you will get a few more glimpses of pen. It's not going to be forever. And that um, there's, if you're a senior and you're worried about your senior year, like this sucks and I don't want to diminish that. But I, I also want to say like, you can't imagine how many more exciting adventure and growth opportunities are in front of you. And this, there's this BS line that college is the best time of your life. It's really fun, but it's not the best. Um, there are parts of it that are best, but you just can't imagine like the adventures that are awaiting you. And so this stinks and it is hard and it's unfair. And yet the, the future trajectory of the rest of your life, it's all in front of you. And just, you know, one step at a time, um, you'll get there. Can I share with you a funny piece of Torah? Are you okay with me sharing one funny piece of Torah before we hang off? It's actually not Torah. It's a Zen Buddhist parable. Um, I learned it from Rav Zalman Chekter Shalomi, not in person, but in a book. And the, it's a weird one, but it's, it's really good for this moment. His parable is that he tells is that a man, uh, again, this is an ancient Zen Buddhist parable, so it's, it's a little bit phallocentric, but a man is chased to the edge of a cliff by a tiger. When he gets to the edge of a cliff, he sees that there's a rope leading down to safety. And so he starts going down hand over hand on the rope. And uh, he looks up, uh, he, he looks down, the tiger uh, is still, sorry, I've screwed up the parable. Let me say it one more time. He's going down hand over hand. He, he looks up, the tiger is waiting for him at the top of the cliff. He looks down, there's another tiger waiting for him at the bottom. And then he notices that there's a mouse chewing at the cord and that the cord holding him up is going to break at any point. And then and only then does he notice what's right in front of him, which is one perfectly ripe strawberry. He notices it and he eats it. It's a weird parable. But I think what it means is that life is essentially being chased by tigers. And it can be grades, it can be competition, it can be uh, you know, OCR. And it can be being chased by the tigers of how COVID-19 is messing up our lives. The mouse chewing away at the rope is a reminder that time is meaningful and important and finite. And that the, the real thing that all of us have to do in our lives is to forget about the tigers and look right in front of us and see the blessings that are in front of us. And that I think is the best strategy I can come up with for how we get through this year is we can't control the, all those tigers which is like how Penn handles this and what your roommates are doing and how your parents are treating you if you're stuck in your house. Um, but what you can do is to cultivate a sense of presence where you look in front of you and notice the blessings that you do have. And that's the only way to get through a tough time. So I hope we all have the strength and wisdom to do that and to do it together and look forward to having an incredible, strange and innovative year with all of you through Penn Hill. Thank you.